Heather, your first Olympic Games were in 2004. You were 19. You were the youngest on that roster. There's been so much talk about um, in the world of U.S. soccer, but on the show, we talk about it a lot, Lori and I, and any guests that we have about the qualifiers that are coming up this summer, a World Cup in 2023, the mix of younger players with experienced veterans and having veterans there that have experience to guide them through maybe not on field, but off field in the locker rooms, playing in Mexico, playing not on American soil, the conditions that could be seen there. So for someone like you who were in the Olympics at 19, you had older players to lean on. How important is that? And when you look at the current state of the national team, uh, what are your thoughts on having that mix of young versus veterans with their experience? Yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, I think it's a, a good problem for Coach Flacco and Anoski to have because I think that there's um, a, a huge talent pool in the U.S. Um, you know, you could – you could go with a veteran team. You could go with a very uh, green team, uh, or you can go somewhere in between. And I think um, it, it will probably be a mix of, of both. I, I think, um, I, you know, clearly your current form and performance is is probably the number one indicator of you know if you should be selected for the national team. But I think that there is value in experience and have been there, done that, proven. Um, that you can um, withstand like a pressure situation um, in the past and, and helping players through that um, in, a, in another tournament, I think it is really helpful. So I think that it will be a little bit of a mix of both. I think on the other side of things, there is something to be said of like a youthful exuberance and not having a little bit of pressure. I think for me as a young player, I didn't play with any stress. I didn't play with any pressure. Like – I was like completely oblivious to the entire magnitude of what I was doing when I was a 19 year old on the national team. And, and, and quite frankly, I think I'm really grateful that I didn't have social media and a lot of things in my, I, I guess in my face to like remind me of, you know, the, the, the stress and the pressure, because I think I was um, blissfully ignorant, I, I suppose. And just uh, went about my, my playing. And I think um, it's something that, uh, you know, young players have to sort of balance these days. But I, I do think that there is, um, yeah, there is, there's a grit in, in both uh, sides of the spectrum, right? A, a seasoned uh, older player has been there, done it before, has like grinded year after year after year and has uh, demonstrated that they can still perform. And I look at somebody like Alex Morgan, I mean, bagging four goals in a game, that doesn't hurt her cause at all. Um, she has really kind of... Uh, stood out this NWSL season. So I'm thrilled for her. Um, but there's also obviously a need for a youthful exuberance. Of, and that's a grit as well, because uh, yeah, there is no, I guess, no pre pressure in, in terms of um, they're a little bit just like sort of naive and, and just happy to be there and happy to just like make a statement. Um, and sometimes that helps too, because uh, as we know, you play your best when you're not, uh, I guess, drenched with this overwhelming stress. Yeah, certainly. And I, I'm always curious too about that with these, this current crop of players, because I mean, no doubt, listen, like the future is, are these young players, right? I mean, they're performing. And I just speak to the fact that like, you know, in general, we should qualify for this world cup, like no doubt, hands down, like this shouldn't be, we should be taking care of business and that, but like, we also know what happened in 2010. Hey, we were there and what that looked like in terms of us being in Cancun and, you know, Mexico showing up playing one of their best games ever. And we almost didn't qualify. Right. And then we play a, a home and away game with Italy to be the last um, team in. So my, my thinking always is on this is how, yes, how do you combine those two groups, right? Having a group that maybe doesn't totally understand or like have to deal with the magnitude of everything, even though I do certainly think that has changed quite a bit nowadays, just with how many eyeballs are on the our national team and on the women's game in general. And social media plays into that, right? There's a there's definitely a whole nother level of performance and um you better perform, right? Essentially, um, because of that. And also but also coming into there's the smallest little details that take place in these qualifiers or however you want to put it in world cup or Olympics, then 
there are just in regular friendlies, right? That looks very different when you get into these, whether you want to believe it or not, you all of a sudden get into a world cup qualifier and it's like, does feel different. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no doubt. And I think um, to add, and, and there's, there's some really good comments going on. When I think back to 2015 world cup team, um, it also was a mix of players that I think the coaching staff had to get right and a mix of roles that I think uh, not everybody was thrilled with. Everybody, everybody at that level wants to be on the pitch in the starting lineup. And everybody in their heart of hearts, in their, in their brain, can reason enough to like put themselves out there in the starting lineup. Like You believe in yourself so much. You have self-belief, and you've, uh, you've obviously made a World Cup team. You're a great player. Um, so everybody wants to be on the field. Nobody likes being on the bench. Nobody at the highest level. So you need players that, um, that have the character mm-hmm. to think what's going to help this team win because that is, at the end of the day, what everybody wants. Mm-hmm. And I think that in 2015, I, you know, I looked to my left and, and right and, and, and saw – players such as Abby Wambach and Shannon Box really, um, I think, you know, Shannon had a bit of an injury, but, you know, take one on the chin. I think it it was probably difficult for Abby at at certain times to be uh, a super sub at that point of her career. And, uh, and she did it and she led us. And I, I'm not sure if we would have won the world cup if we didn't have her leadership um, from that vantage point. And I think I learned a lot from, from those players. And I think, um, yeah, this, this next World Cup run, like if, if you're an older player and you're not playing as much as you want or you're not starting, uh, we all need to be rowing in the, in the same direction because that's, I think, what will like, uh, prevent the U.S. team from, from doing well um, going forward is if, um, you know, if everybody isn't, hundred percent committed to the team. And obviously I think there was a lot of disappointment in the performances um, of the Olympics and, you know, bronze medal is respectable, I suppose, in, in this day and age of the level of women's football, but not the U S standard. And, and clearly the, the, the amount of wins and goals scored and all that kind of stuff was not the, the level that we all would expect from the U S team. So I think that, um, some serious reflection will go into that tournament, what went well, what didn't go well, and uh, will be, you know, played forward going into the World Cup. So, yeah, you got to get the balance right and you got to uh, get the character right as well of the squad. Yeah, that's a good shout. I mean, in terms of the character, I mean, we've seen that, like, I think throughout, right? Like, yes, you're, you're trying to pick the best players, but when you have 23 players that are going, it's also like that might not be – the best 23 it might be who who mixes the best off the field as well because it's gonna it's a long time to be together and i think if you haven't been there then you don't really understand what that's like um in terms of like day in and day out getting along with one another fighting right overcoming some of the obstacles and that's the biggest difference like when you were playing in these friendlies then it's like okay these are some one-off games right but Mm -hmm. when you go into a world cup and then you start to feel or World Cup qualifying, because that's the next thing. But you start to feel the heightened awareness of what's at stake, even if some people are oblivious to it, as you were mentioning, like, right, like what you had that ability to have that because you had older players that were understood the magnitude and they were going to carry the majority of that. But it is, it's a, such a different ball game, And I think that's even more heightened now, again, just because of the growth of the game, right? And so... I mean, not a lot of people knew that we weren't about to not qualify for the World Cup in 2010 or or compared to what that would look like now. There's going to be so many people watching these these qualifiers, and that's going to look very different in terms of performance and the heightened expectations, right? It completely. I love hearing about this. When we look at the qualifiers that are this summer, there will be a roster for that. How different – could or will the roster be uh, for the World Cup compared to the qualifiers? Do you see any big changes happening there um, besides any injuries that are to occur or could potentially occur? But in playing-wise, is is the qualifiers a bit of an evaluation for Vlako Adonofsky, or is it who gets called into qualifiers is who will be traveling to the 2023 World Cup? 
I mean, you have to think that the vast majority of that group will will carry over if they do indeed, you know, qualify. Um, I always, yeah, you always say like maybe three to four changes. I don't know, Lori, what, what do you think? You know, yeah, that's there's, there's injuries, that. there's performance, there's some some latecomers. You know, you do talk about somebody like Shannon Box, right? I mean, to some of the current, uh, maybe current younger players, maybe um, aren't aware of, I guess, Shannon Box's like, trajectory this was a player that was like a, a lead player you know wasn't in the national team program um and you know back then it was the wsa so i realized that that was years back but you know she just grinded away in her in her club play and she was like a late add-on to you know the the national team in 2003 um played in the world cup and then from there just you know was so good. She couldn't, we, you couldn't get her off the field. If you were competing for, you know, a spot, you know, talk about somebody like Leslie Osborne, who's one of my best friends. I mean, it, she just unfortunately was in the era of Shannon box in the midfield. Yeah. And Shannon box was so good. Like Leslie couldn't get the time in the minutes that she needed. Um, and then Shannon box is actually on the top. She was um, a, a ball and door uh, nominee for top three in the world. Um, and, and I don't think a lot of U.S. fans like really appreciate that. So I guess I bring her up because uh, there there is um, time for some changes in that roster. Clearly, you know, there won't be many, but I, I suspect three to four changes. Yeah, I even think about Kelly O'Hara. I mean, if you remember this in, in 2011, it was actually um, Lindsay Tarpley that made the team tore ACL in one of our send off games in Ohio. Then they were going to bring in Sinead Farley. And then Sinead turned it down and then Kelly got the call up. So yeah. Kelly didn't even originally make the team. And then in the last minute is going to the world cup. So, and there was players in before for whatever reason, then Kelly's there. Right. And now we see Kelly and we're talking about her being one of those veteran players. Yeah, I, I agree. I think there's, I think three or four is, um, really a good range because I think if you look at like where this team is and not having, having to have the, the turnover and going with the young players, all totally makes sense in the, the performances that they've had. But I think you sprinkle in a few more veterans that you probably will see in the 2003 or 23 World Cup. But now, just to ensure um, not having a ton of the games um, in the caliber of opponents that you would expect going into these tournaments, bring in a few veterans if they are in, in, in form, right, and are ready to go. But how does that look over a year's time? I don't know, because you are going to see some injuries, especially with the amount these players are playing. Um, you know, what does it look like with a Tierna Davidson coming back from her ACL? Right. There's just like a lot of unknowns. So and then you know, big time players like Julie and Crystal coming back from yeah. the babies. And I'm sure that they. they there's just unknowns, right. There's, there's just a lot of unknowns. The, and, the bulk, I would imagine. Yes. In, in general, will be the same. Um, but yeah, I think it just it's it's what you would expect. Um <laughs> Yeah, I like looking, having you two look inside your crystal balls and just seeing us what you think about 